It was January 24, 1961. A US Air Force B-52 bomber was flying for about 10 hours. And it was during an exercise. And it also had two nuclear bombs on board. But unfortunately, all of a sudden, the right wing catches on fire and the jet fuel starts to pour out. This plane was flying over North Carolina. And from the control room, they send the message to keep flying until the jet fuel runs out. But the B-52 bomber starts to shake and it was starting to descend downwards. And then they reach about 10,000 feet. They saw it was getting dangerous and they told the crew to jump out with parachutes. But there was two nuclear bombs on board. They said send the nukes down with their special parachutes. After they released the two nuclear weapons and jumped out themselves, the B-52 blows up at a height of about 2,000 feet and the parts land onto a farmland. The two bombs are coming down, but unfortunately one of the bomb's parachute did not open and it's coming down without it. The power of each of these bombs are 3 million tons of TNT. All five people in the plane land safely on the ground and one of the bombs land on a tree with its parachute. But what happened to the one that didn't have a parachute? This thing comes down at a speed of 1200 kilometers an hour and goes straight in. You might not believe it, but this bomb lands somewhere where there was a swamp area and it goes straight into the swamp. Fortunately, it doesn't blow up. If it did actually explode, North Carolina would not be the same ever again. You have to know that a nuclear weapon does not blow up on impact but it has a set of switches. But if it did land somewhere hard, there was a chance it would explode. But fortunately, it didn't. The thing is, this bomb hasn't been completely found. They only found a few pieces and the parachute that didn't open. It went into the swamp at such a high speed that they have no access to it. Because if they want to dig down and collect a bomb, they have to do it with hand. And that's a lot of time and work. And also, not anyone can just work on it. They can't just bring a couple excavators to just dig and pull the bomb out. Because the danger levels are very high. One of the most important and dangerous parts of this bomb, which contains plutonium, uranium, and lithium salt, are all the way down into the swamp. Experts say that this bomb is sitting at about 60 meters deep. The place this bomb landed at and it went deep into the swamp, somebody owned that land and the US government was forced to buy the land because there was a nuclear bomb in there now. The North Carolina government checks this swamp every year and they check for radioactive waste or the radiation in the waters, but they haven't found anything. Let's say this bomb exploded, what would happen? This is no ordinary bomb. This is 250 times the power of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. If it exploded, it would demolish a 15 kilometer radius. And after the 15 kilometer mark, deadly radiation would reach. This story happened in 1961, and that was when the Cold War was almost at its peak. If it exploded, there was a chance that World War III would start because the US would believe Russia hit the wing and they would answer with another nuclear bomb. But this was not the first time that a nuclear weapon almost accidentally blew up. On July 27, 1956, a B-47 bomber wanted to land in the US airbase. When it lands, it realizes it doesn't have any brakes. The plane crashes into a hangar that's holding about six nuclear weapons. It hits one of the nuclear bombs and basically demolishes it. And this time, fortunately, it doesn't blow up. 
After this, everybody called this a miracle, because that nuclear weapon was demolished everywhere, but it didn't explode. Until now, all the accident with nuclear weapons has not had a bad turn, and the world is very lucky that they didn't make these explode. On May 22, 1957, a B-36 bomber was carrying a nuclear weapon. But accidentally, they open the airplane door and the nuclear weapon falls out. This bomb hits the ground and it creates a 10 by 7 meter ditch. And it doesn't explode. This bomb is not a joke either. This is a Mark 17. The Mark 17 is a bomb with a power of 10 megatons. Or in simple words, it has 625 times the power of the Hiroshima atom bomb. On July 29, 1957, a US Air Force C-124 is flying with three nuclear weapons on board. It lifts off from Delaware and it wants to take it to Western Europe. But there's an issue with the airplane and it has to drop some weight off. The control room tells them to drop two nuclear weapons into the ocean. They knew that if it hits the water, it's not gonna explode. And they threw two nuclear weapons into the Atlantic Ocean. This is very sad because to this day, those two atom bombs are at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And the funny part is that they didn't even try to save them or take them out. By the looks of it, it seems like the population of Earth is lucky to be alive. On December 5, 1965, USS Taiken Doroga was sailing close to Okinawa, Japan. It was at this moment that an Air Force fighter lifts off from the vessel with a nuclear bomb attached to it. Nobody knows the reason, but this Air Force after a few minutes, crashes into the ocean, and it basically demolishes into pieces. The pilot also gets killed. They never announced the reason why this airplane crashed. It was a huge problem to take this bomb out, and that is why the US Navy says there was no bomb on board. The Japanese government gets very upset, and they complain to the US that they just dropped a nuclear weapon next to them. And they passed the law that no aircraft or vessel should carry nuclear weapons next to Japan. It seems like these mistakes never stop. On January 21, 1968, a B-52 bomber with some nuclear weapons was flying from New York to Greenland. There's a fire inside the cabin and the crew is forced to jump out. The B-52 crashes onto Greenland and blows up. There's four nuclear weapons on board and thankfully they don't explode. But the radioactive waste starts to spill. After this accident, the US and Denmark government hire a bunch of special workers to clean 8,000 cubic meters of snow, water, and ice. The Danish, just like the Japanese, set a rule, and that's to never come close to us with nuclear weapons. As you know, Greenland is a part of Denmark. But eventually, in the year 1981, the US government announced that we're not gonna carry nuclear weapons for maneuvers and exercises, and we'll only carry it when we actually need to use it. These caused these accidents to stop. You might be asking, why did all of these accidents happen for the US? Wasn't the Soviet Union doing all this as well? We have to say that they did this more than the US, but it was the Soviet Union. Any accident or anything bad that happened, it was sweeped under the rug. But the mistakes the US made, some of them made to news. All the Soviet news was secret, and that is why they never had an accident. The only accident that came out of the Soviet was Chernobyl, and that was such a big disaster that they couldn't hide it. 